Hey guys, so today, today, today's video is going to be super duper random. At least it's super duper random for me, but I'm excited because I love filming random videos. I was planning on filming a totally different video today, um, but that's going to get pushed back a couple of days because now this one is taking its place because I cannot believe how many requests I have for the look that I'm about to do for you. Last night on Snapchat, I just quickly snapped myself laying on the couch. Oh, I feel so good to lay on the couch and eat popcorn. But anywho, I snapped saying that I felt like I was naked because I wasn't wearing false lashes because I just had like mascara on my regular, normal, God-given lashes. God forbid! And... <laughs> Whenever I wear my makeup like that, I always like kind of feel like, oh my god, do I look okay? Like, do people notice? I feel like I'm like, hi, I'm sorry I'm not wearing falsies. Like, it's ridiculous. This is why if you don't wear false lashes, don't start. Only wear them like a couple times a year on a special occasion. Don't start doing it every day because then you'll become like me and you become high maintenance for no flipping reason and it's not necessary. So for today's video, I'm going to do the look that I had on Snapchat last night that was so highly requested from you guys. It's crazy because I don't know if I've ever had that many screenshots in my life on Snapchat. Even my friends and family were texting me with screenshots like, please do a makeup tutorial. I'm like, are you kidding? It's so easy. So it is going to be a full coverage look, but it's going to be fresh. It's going to be dewy. It's going to look very hydrated, very girly, and we are not going to be using false lashes, but we're still going to bring attention to the eyes. So let's get started. I feel like... I have like cleavage galore and girl that's not my style so don't judge me it's so quiet in here i feel like i have to whisper at you guys okay my hair is back so now we can do a face without any distractions all right i am going to start off this look by priming my skin today i'm going to be using the becca backlight priming filter i love it has like a really beautiful sheen to it. It's kind of frosty in a sense. So if you are oily and you don't want to add any like additional um, like shine to your face, I would try to stay away from this one. But if you are looking for that, oh my God, this is my favorite one. And if you're looking for a more inexpensive dupe, the L'Oreal one from the drugstore is bomb. Then I'm gonna take the Makeup Forever Step 1 Primer and this is the smoothing one. They have a huge line with all different options, all different primers, but I'm gonna use the smoothing one today just because currently I am having some texture issues right around my nose area. And so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna rub it right on that section to kind of blur out those pores and that texture that I have. This is not necessary right now. You don't even need to use a primer if you don't want. I personally just started using primers like the past year and a half, maybe two years. I never used it in the past because I never needed it. Um, but this one right here is very similar to like a Benefit Professional, a Dr. Brandt Pores No More. It's not going to eliminate any acne or any pores, but it will kind of fill them in and blur them out. Now for foundation, I'm gonna go in with the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation. This is my number one foundation at the moment. I will say I tried the YSL Touche Eclat Radiance Awakening Foundation um, two days ago. My first impression of it was really bad, you guys. It kinda sucks, um, but I'm gonna keep trying it. It might be because my skin was so dry that day, so I will try it again to see if my opinion changes because girl, when you spend that much money on a foundation, you force yourself to like it. I'm gonna put two stripes on the cheeks, one here. Now, I have been using the Artiste brush a lot recently for foundation, which is this right here, but today I'm gonna to switch it up and go back with one of my other favorites because I feel like this is the only brush I've used for like the past five or six weeks and I kind of miss using just a regular one. So this is the Morphe M439 and when you are using a regular foundation brush like this, you actually need more foundation. If I was using the Artiste Oval Brush, I would only put one stripe on my cheek because less is more with that brush. But since this is a regular one, we're gonna do two stripes and then I am going to just buff this out. You know the drill here. Okay, so for concealer, I'm going to go in with Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. I'm using shade Medium Light Neutral and I'm going to just paint this on the under eye area. I really don't have a <laughs> rhyme or reason in doing this. I just kind of slop it on there. I have so much texture right here right now and I don't know what is causing it, but it's been there for like a month and I'm like, I'm high. When I blend out my concealer, I make sure that my beauty blender is very damp. Not just a little damp, but I make sure that it is, like I put it under the faucet and I squeeze it probably 20 to 25 times. That way it's like as big as it possibly can get. 
and then I wring it out in either a paper towel or just a clean hand towel and I just squeeze like twice and then that's it because I want it to be really really damp um, because I wanted to give my skin like that extra hydration and also the more damp your beauty blender is the more it will help you avoid having under eye like cakiness because the moisture will help soak up the additional the excess product so that you don't get cakey. Another tip that I learned from a Mac Pro artist when I was getting my certification was that when you're tapping out your under eye concealer to never just go one way. Like if you just do this, it'll give it more of an opportunity to settle in your fine lines. But if you wanna go back and forth and kind of pounce like this, it'll kind of confuse the concealer to not sit in one place and you're rubbing it in the same motion. So going back and forth in a patting motion will really help it not to settle into fine lines. And I, when I first heard him say that, I was like, oh, okay, but I actually think it works. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the Kat Von D Shade Light Palette and I'm gonna grab this beautiful banana shade right there in the center. This is one of my favorite highlight powders for under the eyes of all time. Um, I absolutely love the Anastasia Banana one, but I don't have that with me right now. I hit pan on it so hard, it's like up against the edges and I'm like scraping it out. I'm like, come to mama. So I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit so you can oh, see me more. You see me now? Okay, I'm going to just tap this all underneath the eye. Ooh, girl, that is light. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Don't worry guys, we're gonna make it work. Always set my eyelid no matter what look I am doing because if I don't set my eyelid, all of this concealer and everything will get really creasy. Taking that same powder, I'm gonna just put it on my chin right here. And then I'm also going to, let me just grab a different brush for this. And I'm also going to take it and put it on the center of my forehead. These are just tricks to balancing out the highlight on the face so that you don't just have a stark white or yellow under eye highlight. Doing this will kind of help balance everything out. And then once we bronze, it'll tie everything together. I'm gonna use the Make It Forever 251 bronzer, 25 eye bronzer. This is the compact, waterproof, ultra natural bronzer right here. My favorite bronzer, I think. This, I mean, I can't say it's my favorite out of all the bronzers in cosmetics, but it's one of my absolute favorites. I love the texture and I think it looks super natural on the skin. So I'm going to pick this up. I am using the Tom Ford 05 brush. I don't wanna talk about it, you guys. This brush is ridiculous. It is so, so over the top, and it is so ridiculously expensive. Like, it's shameful, but honestly, you guys, it is my favorite bronzer brush of all time. But I try not to talk about it too often because it's like one of those things that it's like you can live without it, but once you have it, you're just like, my baby! And then when you get a stain on it, you'll cry yourself to sleep because you'll be like, this costs more than my home! I'm just going to bronze right at the hairline, like literally on the hairline. And I'm going to bring it down kind of to the tail of the eyebrow like this. And then when it gets to the center of the forehead, I want to leave this blank because I want that to stay nice and light right there. And then only at the hairline in the center. And then over here, bring it kind of down, wrap it around the eye towards the corner of the mouth, but not all the way to the corner of the mouth. And now for brows, I'm going to go in with the Anastasia Brow Definer. And I am going to only fill in, I have a hair in my nose. I can't see it, but I can feel it. I got it. And what I'm going to do, since we are doing a more quick, natural look today, I'm not gonna fill in the brows like I normally do. I'm only gonna fill in specific areas that are bald and just need the help. So on this brow, it is always right here for me. And I'm gonna go really light-handed. It's hard to talk when I'm doing this. <laughs> and then go in and, and I will just lightly fill in the tail. This is the brow that is always a pain. We all have that one brow. This is my brow. It drives me crazy. I'm like, can't you just be like your brother? And right here, I have a little bald spot. So I'll just, okay, now I'm just gonna set my brows with clear brow gel this is by anastasia as well i'm telling you this clear brow gel is literally super glue i'll never forget the first time i tried this i was like i am not gonna buy this this is not worth the money it's a clear brow gel that is ridiculous and my friend was like just wait this is literally super glue in a tube it's perfection it's the best brow gel in the world and i was like fine and now here we are 27 bottles later and i am completely addicted 
For eyeshadow, I'm going to do literally like the most natural thing in the world. I'm just going to grab the Morphe 350 palette and I'm going to take this center shade right here that is barely a difference from my own skin tone because I just want something so subtle like a natural shadow and this is so quick and easy and I'm just going to grab any fluffy brush that you have and I'm just going to lightly dust this in the crease of my eye really only on the outer corner. This isn't even necessary. You can just go with absolutely no eyeshadow and be completely fine. I'm just doing this to be, you know, ridiculous as always. I just realized that I didn't bring my MAC nylon over here. What am I gonna highlight my inner corners with? I'm trying to find something to highlight with that's gonna be comparable to MAC nylon because my MAC nylon, wait a second. I have it right here. Shut up. I'm gonna take a tiny little precision brush. This is the Morphe E36, my favorite inner corner brush. Boom! You can put as much or as little of this on as you please. I prefer a lot. <laughs> Are you surprised? I'm also gonna put that on my brow bone as well, just right underneath. This is not the brush that I like to use for this. I like to use a flat synthetic brush, but I don't have one with me, like a MAC 242. I just discovered one by Morphe yesterday that I really fell in love with as well, but this brush will do the trick. So the eyeliner I would like to use <laughs> is the Arden C N one. This is my favorite eye coal of all time, as you can see. It's like completely destroyed on the top. I do not have a pencil sharpener with me, so I can't sharpen it and use that one. So I'm going to use the Makeup Geek Full Spectrum Eyeliner Pencil. I haven't used these yet. I have no idea how it's gonna perform, but we shall find out. So first thing I'm gonna do is just line my waterline. And then same with the top. I'm just going to really focus on that outer corner on the top of the eye right there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just grab any angle brush. This is technically a brow brush by Anastasia. Um, it has like a spoolie on this end, but it works great. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm going to put like the product on the pet, like on the brow brush itself. And then what I will do is just strictly on the outer corner, I am going to kind of buff that liner out and as you can see it's not intense there's not like a ton of product on the brush that's making this really dramatic or anything but i'm just kind of buffing this out a little bit so that it'll be just like kind of like a little smoky only on the outer edge and now i'm just gonna do the exact same thing down here as well kind of smoke it out the purpose behind this is it's going to make your eyes look a little bit bigger because when you do line your waterline and you just walk away, it will tend to close your eyes and they can make your eyes look small and kind of beady. Um, and if you have very large eyes, then that's not going to be like a worry to you. But for someone like me where I have like very medium sized eyes, um, it can make my eyes look really, really tiny and squinty. So doing this step will open the eyes back up. I'm just gonna curl my lashes really quick. I am using a Kevin Aquan eyelash curler. I'm just gonna give it like a quick little squeeze. I don't want my lashes to be too insanely perked up. Now I'm going to be using Better Than Sex Mascara. This is by Too Faced, right? Yes, Too Faced or Foo Faced. If you guys know where that's from, <laughs> then you're my people. This mascara, as you can see when you initially apply it, it like makes your lashes, I don't wanna use the word chunky, but it does. It makes your lashes kind of chunky, really intense right off the bat. Um, so I like to really make sure that I wipe my brush off. Like I like to kind of go like this on a paper towel um, to get off excess products because I don't like it when my lashes look super duper chunky like that. Um, but I do love this mascara in general. So after I rub off a bunch of the product, I like the way it looks better on myself. Do you see how freaking messy I am? This is not even funny. Like, I cannot even control this wand. I'm so messy, but the good news is, is that 
when this mascara dries in like 30 seconds, all I have to do is just grab a Q-tip or a brush and it'll just come right off. Like I'm not trying to not be messy because I know it's so easy to clean up. I will say I like the Ardency In eyeliner better than the Makeup Geek one that I just tried. Um, the Ardency In is a little bit blacker and I feel like it stays in place. Like I can see the Makeup Geek one is already kind of slightly starting to leave my waterline. So I will say that the Ardency In, still my favorite eyeliner. Okay, so now for blush, I'm gonna go in with this broken one right here, which is MAC Melba. I need to replace that. I'm gonna go in with MAC Melba and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of MAC Margin. These are like my one of my two favorite. This entire palette is actually my favorite MAC blushes, but these two are, I think, my two top ones. So Melba and Margin. I'm gonna go pretty strong on the blush today because I really wanna have intense, like, rosy, girly cheeks. A really great dupe for the color combination I'm using right now for blush would be Milani Luminoso, which is from the drugstore. It is such a beautiful shade. I went through an entire compact a couple years ago. I love it so much and it's super similar to this. So now for highlight, I know tons of people were wondering what highlight I was wearing on Snapchat last night. I mix Champagne Pop with Anastasia Crushed Pearl, which is this shade right there and as you can see crushed pearl is like an icy pink and champagne pop is very champagne -y gold so those two together are going to create a very unique color of highlight i don't want to use crushed pearl on its own because it is just so pinky and so icy um but i want to mix it with this because it's kind of like the perfect combination i'm literally just going to go back and forth between the two and get like a perfect combo of both shades and i'm going to grab a fan brush this is the morphe m310 and I'm going to just hit that. Woo, girl! God, I hate the way my highlight looks on camera. It makes my skin look like it has so much texture. It does not look like that in person. It drives me crazy. Okay, so we're going to just blend out this zebra stripe. <laughs> I'm going to bring it up on the side by the tail of the brow kind of fan it down then what I'll do is go back in with the blush brush really quick cork and just run over the base of the highlight so that we don't have a zebra stripe of highlight running to through our face and it kind of blends in with the blush instead of being like you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying I'm gonna go back in with the Morphe 350 palette. I'm just gonna grab this shade right here. And I'm just gonna put it underneath my lip to help it look a little bit poutier and fuller. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. I'm gonna set my face, but I am gonna cover up my eyes because this will make my mascara and eyeliner transfer because it does have oil in it. So I'm just gonna cover that up and then spray my cheeks. For lips, I'm going to be using the new Bite Beauty lipstick. This is the Amuse Bouche lipstick in the shade Honeycomb. It's this really pretty nudie shade. Nudie shade. I'm going to go in with Marc Jacobs lip gloss in the shade Pretty Thing. Pretty much the exact same color as the lipstick. All right, you guys, that completes this makeup tutorial. I hope you enjoy. Keep in mind that I am really into highlighted and dewy skin, and I know that's why so many people requested this look because they were loving all the highlight on Snapchat. But you can still achieve this if you want an all matte look as well. Just follow the steps and leave out the highlighting steps that I take. Just make this your own. Make my looks your own. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I do, make it work for you. You might be really crazy oily and I'm crazy dry, so do whatever works for you. I just want to give you guys like a general outline and help inspire you but I want you to do you so anyways that is it for this video all I can say is I'm praying that my highlight is coming across on camera because sometimes it doesn't and when I look in the mirror right now it is literally the hallelujah chorus being performed by baby angels on my cheekbone but when I look into that viewfinder that viewfinder scares the crap out of me because it looks like a zebra stripe covered in oil and texture 
not cute. That viewfinder is trying me right now and I'm not even gonna look at it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. Thanks for spending the afternoon with me and thank you for requesting this video. So yeah, that's it. I love you guys and I'll see you soon. Mwah! Bye. Hello, darling. At least super <laughs> We very hydrated looking. <laughs> So awkward. I was looking super hydrated, guys. It was like the hydration was so real. I'm thirsty.